Hello, and I'm David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. This episode, we're going to continue on with starting out building this Rails application, the API, for our, we'll, we'll do for building out producer and building out a, a real application. So in any given application, one of the main things that everything needs, or generally speaking, is some kind of user. So this application, this episode, we're going to go ahead and start building out the user. So in general, let's jump over here, Can take a look at our code. The first thing I'm going to just change, and this is just for my own sake, uh, you may or may not need to do this. I've added host to my application for database YAML. And the reason for doing that is that I'm on uh, Windows here with Wizzle. If you're on OS X or straight Linux, you may not need to do that. It just depends on your application. So with that being said, we're going to jump over here to our gem file. And we're going to go ahead and click here. You could see here's our gem file that we had started with before. And I've uncommented a few of these that we're going to end up being using. So at image processing, we'll end up using eventually. Uh, rack cores, we'll end up using eventually. And then today, we're going to really focus on using devise as well as devise JWT. So I've included the URLs here in my gem file. I like to do that so that way I know uh, precisely where these gems are. If I want to go look at the source code, I can just click through to it as opposed to trying to Google the gem and finding it that way. Um, I know a lot of people don't necessarily like comments and I think that's kind of crazy. So I, I like to provide the source of where the gems come from. So within devise, and we'll look at that um, momentarily, but you can see I, ha I have the device with the GitHub provided, uh, and then JWT. If you haven't already, we're going to go ahead and you're going to run rake db create. That's going to create both your development as well as your testing databases. And then we're going to uh, need to run um, bundle install, which I did not put here. And then we're going to go ahead, and after that, we'll be able to generate our device. Uh, installations, which is going to provide us with what we need to run device. So then we'll run Rails generate device user, and that will create the file, uh, the user file, as well as this migration. And as you recall, that lives under DB migrations here. And it provides us with a lot of different options that we can use to expand on device and choose. So database authenticatable means can we authenticate with the database? Recoverable is are, is the user allowed to reset their password? Rememberable means can they have a token where it says, hey, remember me? And then it'll log in. Trackable, um, depending on where you are at in the world, this may or may not be something that you can or not provide for your users. For example, if you're in the EU with GDPR, you may not want to do this. Um, but if you want to keep track of it, this is a nice built-in thing to devise where you can keep track of when the users have been signed in um, and as well as the number of count. Confirmable, this is one I've uncommented because I am going to include it in my application, which is uh, the ability for device to go ahead and make sure that the user gets an email that they have to click to confirm that user before that user is a valid user. And this is just an easy, easy, easy way to cut down on spam. In general, that means that the spam bots have to have an actual email address as opposed to anything that they arbitrarily want to put into the form. And then finally, lockable, um, which if you want to go ahead and make it so that if somebody user has tried to log in too many times and you want to lock them out, let's say you're building a banking application or something that should be highly secure and users should only get so many chances to run it, this is a way to do that within um, Rails here uh, and device. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. So you can see the next command, if you um, look back here at our readme, is going to be Rails DB migrate. So you could see, or rake DB migrate. I'll do Rails. So this is going to go ahead and run this migration to create the user's table. 
as well as adding those indices uh, that were provided down below. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add confirmable to this in the next episode, and we're going to go ahead and continue to get set up uh, with devise JWT. Um, in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look very briefly at uh, heart combo slash devise. I definitely recommend reading the documentation. It's generally the best source. You can go ahead and post on Discord or Twitter or Reddit about questions, um, Stack Overflow, but read the source first. Generally speaking, there's a lot of good content in here and you can check you know, people's issues and uh, conversations to figure out exactly what you want and what's going on. But in exa uh, for example, they have example applications within this um, repository and it has how to get it started so this is the information that we've already gone ahead and done so you could have renamed if you didn't want your user model to be called user you could have named it something else and now we have this action here before action authenticate user which will allow us to be uh, check whether that device user is valid and then we also get, for the current signed-in user, we have a uh, current user, as well as a few others. So we'll go ahead and continue on with the application. Uh, next up, building using Devise JWT because our application is API only. So we're gonna go ahead and add that next. And then we'll go ahead and keep on expanding upon that. See you guys next time.